you ever watched that, Brother Branham? That's good, but that is just, that's just being able to read. You set this tabernacle, you listen to tape, and yet the Spirit is never quickened you to even follow the Word of God. Don't forget, this tabernacle will lose its strength. These people claim to believe every word that you say to be true, but they don't. They don't believe it. Their own actions prove that they don't. Greetings, friends, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose of this video is to show the fourth lie coming out of Branham Tabernacle, which is a false vision of a denominational mandate to play tapes. Branham Tabernacle's leadership has basically become a denomination, and they want every church that calls himself a message church who believes the end time message of God's prophet, Brother William Branham, to play tapes as the main part of their worship services rather than having living men preach the living word of God. Of course, we know this is a false vision. Recall the first lie is that every word on Brother Branham's tapes are thus saith the Lord. The second lie is all answers are on Brother Branham's tapes and Brother Branham's words cannot fail. And the third lie was that people can unquestionably believe every word on Brother Branham's tapes, even if he lied and people don't have to have their guard up or be careful when listening to Brother Branham because every word is thus saith the Lord. And of course, these lies, if believed, open someone up to receiving the spirit of idolatry and other evil spirits, which is why, as I've said in the past, the most harsh comments I've ever gotten on YouTube are not from sinners or denominational people. They're from the tape church movement people. And also recently, they've stopped making comments on my videos likely because Branham Tabernacle leadership controls them and tells them don't listen to anything except Branham Tabernacle's pastor and Brother Branham. So friends, they are in a very sad state. It's a cult-like denomination. So we got to keep praying for them as we will on this video. Before playing the audio of Branham Tabernacle's leadership speaking their false vision, I want to reference my 77th video called Tape Boys Are Not Part of Jesus' Fivefold Ministry. It's a 41 minute long video. And if you want a more thorough teaching on this subject, I would encourage you to go listen to that video or watch that video. So now let's listen to the audio of Branham Tabernacle's false vision, which, which is a denominational mandate that all churches should play tapes rather than have living preachers. And just so you know, I've heard Branham Tabernacle leadership say, it's okay for preachers to preach, but the main emphasis has to be pressing play. Well, of course you never find that in the Bible. You never find Brother Branham saying that either. In this audio, you'll hear Branham Tabernacle's pastor say the message or the tapes are the absolute. I'll address this lie in a future video by God's grace. So let's listen to the quote. There has to be a true fivefold ministry. There's men of God that have true callings of God on their lives. That believe this message with all their heart. They preach this message with all their heart. They believe it. They believe this message is the absolute. Amen. Now you've got a true fivefold minister has got to believe this message is an absolute. This end time message. He just said it was the token, which is the Holy Spirit. It is this message. So it has to be your absolute. But they got to catch the vision. You got to play the tapes. You've got to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now that we've heard Branham Tabernacle's lie, let's play that, and then right after that, we'll play Brother Branham's vision for the future. In 1962, taking sides with Jesus, Brother Ram told us his vision for the future. His vision was for young ministers to be trained up in the message so that when he did missionary work and gain new converts overseas, he could send up trained ministers to go to these people and preach the message to them. He said he wanted to place them worldwide. But in order to do that, they'd have to have ministers meetings where the elder ministers could teach the younger ministers, the preachers of the gospel, and so Brother Branham said the younger ministers could have the gospel straight and they would influence people the right way. Brother Branham called it God's system. So Brother Branham's vision was centered around the fivefold ministry working together, training up young ministers in order to place them 
in new churches that would be formed from Brother Branham's missionary work. Let's listen to the quotes. But they's got to catch the vision. You got to play the tapes. You've got to. Now we're going to start off with the early church and just bring it for about five minutes now down to what they did and then I can show you the vision that I have for the future. You brother out there with your little churches and uh, you want to, you're doing no work, God will reward you for that. Go out there, preach, do everything you can. Then all of you get together, you bunch of men and have meetings and talk on deep things of the scripture and pray. And, and then in there, get training in your own groups, other ministers. Man that you see that has a calling in their life for the ministry. Train them, young man. Bring them in here to the elder. All of you sit together in a ministerial meeting and there teach the deeper things of God. Don't go on the bad end. Keep someone who you can have confidence in to be kind of like a, a leader for you. And then there, churches can go here and training up a group of men and if I'm in evangelistic work somewhere, there's places I can place them worldwide. What if I had a group of men, young men trained in a message, Okay. They say, now wait a minute, before I leave here, we're going to set in order these churches. I have a man who's already telegrammed and they got the money. They're on the road here right now to take over this. A good man is two or three young men with him who will be his helpers and assistants. And a church of this faith can be set there, which will be an outpost in India. Outpost in Germany, outpost in Switzerland. Well, right now, we should have them all around the nation. It's where I've been. Amen. And the message then from there comes another, from another comes another. See what I mean? If you can get the preacher straight and him going right, look what he's going to do. Amen. He's going to influence up. It, it would take care of hundreds of these things. That's it. We're just beating that, you see? You've got to get it a system, God's system, right? Uh, Jethro said to Moses, well, you can't beat out all of them. Or, and God put elders out there, 70 of them, and took the spirit with all Moses and put them up on those 70 elders, and they prophesied. And it didn't weaken Moses a bit and strengthened him. <laughs> he had just as much prophecy in him as they did before they took the spirit off of them and prophesied. See, he just separated the son of Moses, let them judge the smaller things. Uh, but when it comes to the major things, you come in with them and help them like that. That's the way. That was God's way back there. That was God's way in the in the early church age. And I believe it's God's way now. Right. For us to do it. So let's do it. Just quit talking about it and do it. That's all. We can do it by the grace of God. Don't you believe it? Let's notice the contrast between Brother Branham and current Branham Tabernacle leadership in regards to their visions. Brother Branham's vision was to train preachers with answers. In contrast, current Branham Tabernacle leadership's vision is to ignore preachers and instead train tape boys to push play, giving the people no answers to their questions, like, is Billy Paul the promised Joseph or not, as Brother Branham said in 1951. Also, Brother Branham's vision was to send preachers to new converts to his Bible-based message. Contrast that with current Branham Tabernacle leadership's false vision to send tape boys into established five-fold ministry churches to infiltrate them and persuade them to preach less, which breaks the word of God, and to tell them to just press play and obey. So who are we going to believe? Which vision are we going to catch? Brother Branham's vision or the current false vision of Branham Tabernacle leadership. Let's catch Brother Branham's vision, because it's a Bible-based vision. So friends, I hope this was helpful. Notice Branham Tabernacle is saying you have to copy our way of false worship. It's a denominational mandate. They're saying you have to see the fivefold ministry the exact same way we do. You've got to do it. That's so sad. They should be saying you've got to do what the Bible says like St. Paul said, and like Brother Branham said. Brother Branham never had Branham Tabernacle's false vision. Brother Branham never had his sons 
false vision of the fivefold ministry that essentially exalts Tate boys above the fivefold ministry. And now let's play a few quotes from Brother Branham where he tells the fivefold ministry, I'm right behind you. Brother Branham said he's not the only one that should preach. Brother Branham saying we need preachers. And he says, don't change a thing in regarding to evangelists continuing on the field. And of course, current Branham Tabernacle leadership has contradicted all these quotes from Brother Branham, proving they do not believe Brother Branham. And so we know if Brother Branham was here, he'd be right behind the true fivefold ministry, living men preaching the living word of God as the Bible commands. In Ephesians 4, verses 8 through 16, and in Romans 10, verses 14 and 15, the Bible said, how shall they preach except they be sent? Notice, it's they. God wants they, a group of men, to preach the word of God, just like Ephesians 4, 8 through 16 says, the fivefold ministry. Today, Branham Tabernacle says we need one man to preach, William Branham. They say him, one man, but the Bible says they, a group of men in the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Let's listen to the quotes. Would we still be on fire and preach the gospel, or is the time over? No, keep preaching. This is as hard as you can preach. Brother, stay with it. I'm right behind you. But they's got to catch the vision. You got to play the tapes. You've got to. And just bring it for about five minutes now, down to what they did, and then I can show you the vision that I have for the future. Now, Brother Branham, is it true that no one should preach but you? We have seen your... We have seen you ordained, man. We do don't believe you would do that if there were not that they were not to preach. Mercy, brother, sister. Remember who told you nobody's preached for me? I'd sure be a poor subject of God with all that. No, every man or uh, feels a call of God upon his life. Get into the ministry, start preaching. We need them. Man of God are not at all over the world to preach the gospel. See? I'm just one little pebble on the beach among many big stones. See? So uh, there's this many that's more eligible, more worthy, more of anything to preach than me. I'm just one little humble person laying out here. I'm one grain of wheat in a whole garner. See? So it's just, uh, you know what I mean. Any man that's called to God needs to preach the gospel. But they've got to catch the vision. you got to play the tapes. You've got to. And just bring it for about five minutes now, down to what they did, and then I can show you the vision that I have for the future. Should evangelists continue on the field in this hour? Of course, what they mean. Certainly. By all means, don't change a thing. If Jesus is coming in the morning, preach today like if it's going to be 10 years from today, but live like it's going to be at this hour. Amen. Don't, don't get scrupled up now. That's what I'm trying to warn you about, see? Just don't be odd, peculiar. Don't change nothing. But if you're doing something wrong or doing evil, repent. Okay? Come back to God. Continue on your evangelistic service just as you always did. In closing, I hope this video has been a blessing. Let's pray for the leadership in Branham Tabernacle. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come humbly and I ask God that you'd help the leadership to repent of their lies. Lord God, may your spirit expose the lies and false doctrines in their lives so they can be set free from these evil spirits. I pray for your mercy. I pray for your grace over these souls, these millions of individuals who are deceived. Lord, I pray you could save out of there what can be saved for your glory, Lord. I know you'll do it, Lord God, for the scripture says, All that the Father has given me will come to me, and him that cometh to me in no wise will I cast out. So, Father, use these videos for your glory, that the truth of Jesus Christ may be proclaimed. We thank you in advance for your mercy in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you have any questions, concerns, or testimonies about this video, please contact me. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.